Assalamualaikum fam, hope you're doing fantastic. So, this book, The Roman Miscellany by Anthony Everett, is packed filled with very interesting myths, legends surrounding ancient Rome. And this is one particular myth, legend, story, you name it, of Lucretia. It's quite sad, yet it is unique. And... It can be seen as part of history, or even tabloidy. I'll let you decide. Okay. Women had an uncomfortable time of it through Rome's history. Even the morally excellent could come to a bad end. And then it goes on to say that in the 6th century, there were some young soldiers who were chatting in camp. One of them, the author contends, was Sextus Tarquinius, who was the son of King Tarquin the Proud. Apparently everyone was drinking heavily, and the conversation started talking about the men's wives. And then it goes on to say, each man extravagantly praised his own. So you have all these men praising their wives. And they're, I mean, they're drinking, getting drunk, and talking about each other's wives. And it's a little bit weird. And they were arguing about who was the best, right? Who had the best wife, you know? It's a pretty tense topic if you start to think about it. But something interesting happens. Sextus proposed that they ride at once to town and see what their wives were doing. It turned out that they were all having a good time at a party, except for Lucretia, spouse of a certain Colatinus. So Lucretia's husband is Colatinus, right? It's interesting that they were drinking they get on their horses and they go check on their wives and their wives are at a party. It's interesting how, you know, this socialization of their wives is allowed while they're not there. It's quite interesting, right? So you get to see how Roman, some Roman women were, right? But notice this. Beautiful and virtuous, she was found at home spinning in company with her maids. So Lucretia, she wasn't at a party. She was at home, being good, and she was making... Spinning means like making fabric, making wool, making some type of spun thread. It doesn't say if she was making a shirt, a blanket, or just, you know, fabric or, you know, string in general. Just that she was doing something productive and crafty uh, that, you know, showed she was occupying her free time with something better. Instead of socializing at parties like the other women who were the wives of the soldiers. It was unanimously agreed that she had won the contest for female virtue hands down. So now you see how all of them were talking about wives. They went around and they discovered that female virtue is when the woman is home doing something productive. Not socializing away from her husband. Right? So this is another example of, you know, female virtue in the sense of the 6th century. Pretty cool, right? So Sextus was smitten. A few days later, unbeknownst to her husband, he called on Lucretia and asked to be put up for the night. So notice what Sextus has done. He's been sneaky. So he's the son of King Tarkin the Proud. So he's a prince. He was rabble-rousing, essentially, with one of his soldiers, well, with several of the soldiers, but he got his eyes upon Colatinius's virtuous wife, Lucretia. Now he is asked to be hosted there. If you don't know, the nobles could travel to the different villas and uh, be, you know, tended to as if, you know, it was an honor if the nobles visited your home and you fed them and they you know drank your wine ate your bread it was seen as an honor right so of course they're like hey let's let you know the prince in and they did but as we see Sixus's intention is not pure in the small hours he crept into her bedroom and woke her up if she would not let him sleep with her he whispered he would kill her and a slave whose naked body he would place in her bed. So essentially you see his cunning here. Not only did he betray one of his own soldiers, he abused his authority, but also 
is coercing, you know, a good woman to be like, hey, you don't have anything to see with me. I'm going to execute a slave and put it in your bed. Very scary, right? He would say he had killed them in flagrante dilecto. So you would see that he's totally bullying her and threatening her. He's saying, oh, well, if you don't sleep with me, he's saying, I will execute one of your slaves, put them in your bed, then say I caught you two doing something, and then, you know, you'll be executed anyways, right? So you might as well submit, he's arguing, let me do what I want to do, and I'll be out. So he is abusing his authority as a prince and disrespecting his own soldier's wife and also ruining her virtue because obviously she's a good woman, she's not a loosey-goosey, and he has done a terrible deed. The lady cared for her reputation and to preserve it concealed her charms. Sextus had intimacy with her and rode back to camp, so she ended up being coerced, essentially, you know, violated, and he just leaves, which was quite sad, which, of course, he's going to leave, but it's truly tragic how he did that to her. You would think maybe he would give some sort of, I don't know, just something, like, for her silence, you know? It's just quite scary, truly, truly sad. And it says that in the morning, Lucretia summoned her husband and other relatives and revealed what had taken place. And this is a quote from her. My body only has been violated. My heart is innocent, but I must take my punishment. Whereupon she drew out a knife, concealed in her dress, and stabbed herself to death. So, uh, I think, that it, I don't know if they would word it as adultery, but, you know, flagrante dilecto, dishonoring your husband is a death penalty. So she did, she's so virtuous that she decides to say, you know, I'd rather tell the truth, even though I know the punishment. And then she doesn't tell someone else to do it. She does it herself. So here you see in this story of Lucretia, not only was she not at the party, but she had the courage to just say, you know what, I'm going to do what I have to do and I'm going to wait till the morning to do the right thing instead of screaming. And, you know, she, she, she had sort of like this fortitude to be like, fine, this is a prince. She knew she assessed the situation and strategized her way out of it is my point. And here you see how she rather not live on with the shame that the prince would have placed upon her for the rest of her life, which, you know, today shame culture has, you know, the good and the bad. But in, you know, 2,000 years ago, it wasn't as easy to pack up and move. I don't know, it just seems like such a tale would have traveled. I don't know, and, and women, they were not really someone who could just go get a villa at that time. So, you know, the honor of her husband was ruined, and his name as a soldier, like, it would have caused a big thing, and it's quite sad that she felt this was her only way out, yet you can admire her in a sense where she said, this is how I'll prove the truth, that I didn't do it willingly, right? So she kind of does this thing for her husband to save his honor in a really strange way. Do you know what I'm trying to get at? Where she's like, I don't want my husband's honor to be damaged to where people say, look what your wife did with the prince. Rather, wow, his wife was so virtuous that look what she did because of the prince. You see what I'm saying? And it says that the scandal was so immense, a meeting of the people's assembly called for an end to the monarchy, and the Tarquins were driven from Rome. So look at that. So essentially, her action caused such a huge shock to everybody that they're like, this is despicable, right? Beyond just regular despicable, but look at her deed. Look at what she decided to do in reaction to the prince's advances so this means she was even more virtuous, right? So look what the prince did to this super virtuous woman. A woman who was not at parties, a woman who rather take her life than be coerced into doing something against her will and against her husband, even if he's a prince. So this is a very high ideal for women to look up to and to kind of show that we all know princes can be corrupt. 
But the point is, is that having an evil monarch in power who thinks he can go around and violate the wives of his soldiers is obviously not the kind of ruler you want for your, your area. And who wants to be loyal to a man who makes wives unloyal? To the to their own to his own soldiers, so it's really an interesting dynamic when you look at this story from multiple levels, right? So the Tarkins monarchical bloodline driven out of Rome. Again, you see how the Romans have this emphasis for valor, but you also see them, you know, examining what is female virtue. And here, you can see that yes, women were allowed to socialize at a party. But the highest exemplary woman was someone who was staying at home doing, you know, crafty things. So it'd be like today, someone using the sewing machine, you know, cooking a meal. It wasn't somebody, let's just say, running a vineyard or something like that. It's quite fantastic when you really just examine this story of Lucretia uh, and her husband, Calantius when the sexist Tarquinius prince uh, did this deed. So, wow, you get to see the cunningness of the dirty-minded man and the contrasting to the virtuous chasteness of the woman. I mean, it's really cool. Like, she was so like, no, I don't want you. Unlike today, where it's like, okay, well, pay me, or OnlyFans, or you can look at me for free. Or something. Do you see what I'm saying? How many women today would be like, Oh, a prince, he's rich. I'll do whatever. Screw my husband. But her, she was like, uh, I'd rather tell the truth and I'm leaving this earth. You see what I'm saying? I mean, talk about a good woman, man. I mean, it would be nice if she, you know, she wouldn't have left the earth, as you know. I mean, like, but she did what she did and it's her right to do what she wanted to do for the sake of her honor. And her husband's honor and her doing so ended up getting the Tarkins driven out. So if she wouldn't have, one could argue the prince would have just had a higher authority and said, she's the liar, she wanted it. Then she would have been executed and her reputation ruined and he would have stayed in power. And her poor husband would have been disgraced and mocked amongst the soldiery and his family, you see. So it's really quite an interesting multi-layered story that I wanted to share with you. But the <laughs> drinking revelry of, you know, soldiers talking about their wives, who's more virtuous, kind of hints at how they wanted a virtuous woman, right? It's, it's really cool. So, uh, <laughs> mashallah.